So guys, how to build a spool? Well I found in these how to videos, it's also worth putting like a practical element of you seeing what a difference the fit in these parts makes to the car. Just like this taster of what's coming up when it's as fit as... I know a lot of you out there might be asking, what the hell's a spool Richie? A spool gets rid of the centre differential in your car, in this case uh, my Armour Typhon V4. And it, that means that then the rear wheels are going to be running pretty much at the same speed as the front wheels are, enabling you to get better traction, lay the power down and go faster. But a key thing about a spool is it, it's going to enable you to fit a smaller spur gear than say the stock armour car will do, which means you can then run a larger pinion and thus go faster. Just like this is. Thumbs up if you like where this is going guys. Well, as I say, I like in these sort of how-to videos, I like to show you the practical end result of a thing. So in this video, you're not just going to see me building up the spool, which I'm going to do in a little while, but first of all, you're going to see this car running with, this, with these speed run tyres on. Now bear in mind, these are a centimetre and a half smaller than the stock tyres are, so don't expect this to run, this thing to run as fast out of the box as it would do maybe with the stock tyres on. First run it's going to do is on 6S with the 22 stock pinion fitted on. New speed run tiles, bear in mind there guys. Second run you're going to see it do is with the stock spur on there, but a 24 tooth pinion. So we'll see what speed we get out of that. Now, that's close to the maximum because even with this sliding mount, the maximum you can fit to a Typhoon V4 is a 25 tooth pinion without fitting a spool in the centre of the car, enabling you to fit a smaller spur. So the Deltas is an example of what the car runs like with the spool fitted. Then I'm going to show you exactly how to build a spool on camera and I'll list all the part numbers in the description uh, below this video. Then after I've shown you how to build a spool you're going to see this same car running but it's going to be running with a 42 tooth spur on, 24 tooth speed pin in so you're going to see just what a difference fitting the spool makes and bear in mind you can go far far smaller than a 42 spur. Hope that makes sense guys, any questions you've got, please do uh, post them away in the comments section below this video. Okay guys, first of all, we've got it running on 6S, speed run tyres, 20 tooth pinion, but no spool fitted to the car. Uh, Dave, who's actually one of my viewers, is uh, there on the radar gun, got a GPS on board as well, so we're going to have a speed run tyres feared, so we're going to have a quick run up and down and uh, see. The speed run tyres, I will point out though, a smaller diameter than the stock ones, but uh, fingers crossed, we'll go a little bit quicker. Ooh, 62. I don't think I had more in it, yeah. I think it was smaller tyres. Now you may think that's slower than the stock 70 miles an hour there guys, and you'd be right, but to go fast, first of all guys, you're going to learn how to drive slower. The key thing being guys, as the speed builds, these tyres won't balloon. So what we got on the radar, 62? 62. 62. Well many thanks to Dave for manning the radar gun. Now the next thing you're going to see is this car running with a 24 tooth pinion on, but no spool. Clear? Yeah, clear. Ooh. 71. 71, so that's a full 11 miles an hour just with that gearing on. Yeah. Well, thanks to Adrian for doing the uh, radar gun for me. Next up, I'm going to show you step by step how to build a spool, followed by another radar gun test with the spool fitted out on the street. Will all that go to plan, guys? I think at the end of the day, trust me. This is definitely going to be worth it. Okay guys, so now straight on to how to build a spool. Well the spool in question in here is going to replace the central differential. Now this is the new Armour Typhon V4. Undo these four bolts, this cover comes off and the existing diff just slides up, the drive shafts pop out and you can remove it and fit your spool in there. So what are we going to need to make our spool with? Well first of all, you're going to need some Armour Steel Diff Outdrive Cups, a couple of bearings, hot racing centre locker, 
some pins for that centre locker to lock these hard drive cups on with. A piece of heat shrink tubing. What's that for? We'll come on to that in just a second. And lastly, a spare gear of your choice. In this case, a 42 tooth uh, Mod 1 pinion. Now it says Traxxas on that because uh, ideal for use with this spare are Traxxas XO1 spare gears. And well, I've got a 24 tooth pinion in there at the minute. I've also picked up today from Delta Abbey's a 29 tooth uh, Mod 1 pinion to go in there. So that combined with that should mean for some serious speed. Have your guesses right now boys because I haven't a clue. Anyway first things first before we get on with the spur I'm going to remove that centre diff. Okay just four screws to undo here. And there, that simply lifts out. Out drives he says. Try and keep my arms out of the way there guys. And there we go centre diff removed simple as that. Now you see the reason why we need the two the two bearings and the two outdrive cups, guys. And this is the bit we're going to replace uh, with the diff locker and uh, that uh, spur gear we've got here. The key thing in building a separate one of these is, if you want to change it back uh, just to a buggy for blasting, you can simply reinsert this in, uh, having taken your uh, lock spool out of there. Okay guys, so on to the build. The first thing I'm going to do, cut all the packets open. I will list every single part number I've got here in links below the video. Okay guys, now I'm going to show you how to assemble the thing and I'm going to try not to get my fingers in the way as much as possible. Okay guys, so we've got our spool locker, we've got our drive cups and we've got our pins. Now there is a little hole in the side of here that you will marry up that the pin will push through and you think that locks the thing nicely in place. This is where the O-ring comes in. Before you put this through, you're going to slot the top of the O-ring onto there and you're going to pull that down. Now you think that's going to lock the pin in place nice and tight. However, from hearing from people on the internet, this O-ring will work loose on the pin on this side. Now you may wonder why there is no groove cutting on the left side of the spool. Here's the reason why. Okay guys, well on the uh, spool, you will know it's just got one groove cut in there which covers one pin with an O-ring and on the other side there's no groove cut in there at all. That's because on this left side, the metal gear, uh, when it's put on the spur there, will cover over that pin with the inside of the gear. Whereas on this side, you need something to hold the pin in. But more on that in just a second. Okay guys, well at the start I mentioned you needed the heat shrink tubing. I chose not to use it. I've dubbed over this bit uh, because I found it so problematic to actually squeeze the uh, heat shrink tubing over, uh, particularly when we've got the bearings in place. Uh, so I chose to put a spot of hot glue uh, to lock either side of the pin in place far faster and far easier uh, than fiddling around with the heat shrink tubing. So ignore my earlier comment on the heat shrink tubing. You don't need it. And the last but blindly obvious thing, guys, is the bearing needs to go on over the top before you put that in there. So quite a bit of assembly to do at once. But let's watch and see how we get on. Okay, now the first thing is to ensure that you run around the hot glue on the side that has got the groove cut in for the uh, little O-ring on there. So that side is nice and tight. That's not going anywhere in a hurry. You can way, way overdo the glue, uh, but I've used that uh, just for comparative purposes. Now on this end, guys, you need to take into account that you also, to compound matters, going to need to fit the gear on over the top and just look at the spacing for the pin in there. It is nigh on minuscule in order to get that in there. So you're going to have to leave that with a little bit of float, if you like, on there while you squeeze, he says, the outdrive cup in. This is nowhere near as easy as a job as I thought it would be, guys. I'm now going to get myself a pair of pliers in order to put the pin in through that hole that end. Okay, guys, when it comes to the pin on this side, the gear is going to slide over the top onto these three screw holes here, and the inside of the gear is going to hold that pin in place, but it's very, very tricky to get it in place, so I'm inclined, if I can, to squeeze a tiny little bit of hot glue on there in order to stop it moving around while I'm putting the screws on. Hope that makes sense. Okay, you see there guys, I've squirted just the tiniest bit of glue on there because the next step is gonna be to line these three holes up and put our screws in through there, fastening the spare gear on. 
Now, I'm slightly worried when putting these screws in, so I'm tempted to put thread lock on each of them to ensure they don't go anywhere. That is how to make your spool up. So, how do we fit it? Let's fit it over one drive shaft first of all. This is one of these child unfriendly moments. Somebody will probably tell me there's a nice easy way of doing this, but I can't for the life of me think of it right now that doesn't involve very child unfriendly language. In the end it pops in very easily. All that remains in terms of fitting the spool is to fit those four screws back in the top and uh, then a simple job, undo these two screws, pull the pin into the side and put the uh, 24 tooth one on there. Then I'm all set to go out for its first run with the spool fitted, 40 tooth tooth spur on there uh, I'm running with the 24 tooth pinion on there to start with, uh, keeping the 29 tooth one in the bag for the minute. Just check the stability of the car, etc. No point in going mad, baby steps with these speed run stuff, guys. And besides which, even despite it being half past, gone on the other side of half 12, I've still got to change the front and rear diff oils. Now we're straight into the speed test with a spool on board, 42 tooth spur, 24 tooth pinion. Now the first run, guys, I'll warn you now, does not go to plan. The result is not at all what I was anticipating. And then like a little light bulb appears above my head, I make one simple change, and in like 30 seconds, this thing becomes an absolute game changer. Because in the second run, this car becomes just about the fastest thing I own. Sorry? 66? No, it's a fully charged pack. Let's try again. Yeah. Sorry? 85. 85. <laughs> you know what it was? What? I'd, I'd, got, I'd got 85 there, yeah. guys. That is sitting now, that, guys, because this is part of my video on how to fit a spool or why you should fit a spool to your car. This is with the same 24 tooth pinion, guys, but simply dropping down to the 42 spur on air. So that is the difference it makes, guys. 85, I can't believe that. The problem I had on the first run there, guys, I'd got the uh, throttle rate dulled right down. So I thought, I wonder if that's the issue. Turn the wick up on that to full. And that's the difference it made, what we're going from 66 oh, to 85 you. on there. So always make sure you check your throttle, Reshi. <laughs> Thank you very much, yes. Marvin. Outstanding. Yes. And this is the, the spool fitted to this, uh, is the one that uh, JJ Customs uh, recommend. So I'll put a list of uh, parts below the video, guys. 85. Mm. Come on. Now, I have got the 29 tooth pinion in the car, which I may fit and give this another run today. Okay. But we should see it's running super stable, isn't it? Yeah. Very nice. Thank you very much, Marvin. Okay, you're welcome. So, did we like that second run there, guys? 85 miles an hour. Absolute game changer to my mind. The cost of these parts really isn't that great and that's all the change was made to the car. We're not running any different electrics, anything like that. Big shout out to Phil Jolly, link to his channel below this video for giving me advice on setting up the diffs on the car and a few tweaks to the suspension because this thing, as you saw in that video, ran absolutely bolted to the ground on there, showed no signs of lifting whatsoever on there, felt super, super stable. So I can't thank Phil enough for that advice on there and answering my name questions late at night online. So big shout out to uh, you, Phil, there. Anyway, guys, plenty more to come from this car this summer. I have a feeling that magic ton is coming up fairly soon and fairly fast because I'm, I felt very confident driving this thing at like super speeds there today. And while well, I said this was the fastest car I had up until now, earlier on this afternoon it was, later on this afternoon this became the fastest car I had. So if you don't want to miss that video, then don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching guys. Well, thumbs up if you like this video, guys. Post any comments you might have in the comment section below the video and hit the circle below to subscribe. And if you do hit the circle, don't forget to hit the bell.